Hi, and welcome to lesson three of week three of Julia Programming for Nervous Beginners. This lesson is about structures. We've already seen at least one. So um, this one is about the while loops. And the idea is just to describe and illustrate iteration using while code, code blocks. So uh, after the lesson, you'll be able to argue whether it is better or worse to use a, co a while block for a particular iteration. You'll be able to discuss scope uh, relative to a while block. And you'll be able to explain how to write a while block with particular reference to the stopping condition and the need for at least one global variable. You'll also need to uh, use control C to guard against the possibility of an infinite loop. And you'll learn the push bang function with which one can extend an array. And finally, uh, you talk about the, disc, uh, the nesting of code blocks. So the first question is why one should use while blocks at all. And the answer is that um, it is often necessary to, uh, to keep doing a particular instruction for a long time. And then eventually, that instruction becomes false and you stop. Um, so uh, if you have an input output stream, or such as uh, streaming music or text which is coming in and you don't quite know how long it will take. So such iterations occur quite often with input output streams such as uh, music or file that has no clear ending announced. Um, and there are many other situations where in fact the number of uh, times you go through the code is not even predictable then you have to use while. Um, there are other situations where while might even be better or worse. Important thing about while blocks is that they have local scope. Um, uh, the, the keyword creates a local scope and it ends with the end which is paired with it. I'll say a little bit more about pairing of end with while later on. So if any global variable is to change inside the while block, it must be qualified with global. And this is actually crucially important. Here's a very simple while structure. So let us uh, use this as an example. So this is while a variable, a loop variable, um, is less than four, then we print the value of the loop variable. So remember that the dollar there will um, do string interpolation. And we update the loop variable each time we go through here. So we start at some value and we make it bigger and bigger and bigger with this line. So let's initialize it. And then let's say while loop variable is less than four, we print ln and we just do a debugging kind of statement. And why do I say this is a debugging kind of statement? Because this uh, tells you what is the situation right now with regard to your program. Um, the variable loop variable uh, has properties. It can be lo local, it can be global, it can be negative, it can be positive, it can kind of have a particular value, of course. And so whichever value it is bound to, is reported by this line. So you can keep track of what's happening with your variables. Uh, as far as debugging goes, it is perhaps a clumsy way of keeping track of variables. But on the other hand, it is very clear and completely under your own control. And then we need a global variable. Um, and so we have to qualify a, a loop var as a global variable. And we have to update it. So I'm going to update loop var with a value that is one bigger than its current value. Now this may look like a, a contradiction, certainly if we just read it mathematically, if loop var is zero, then that seems to be saying that zero equals one, but that is not how to read it at all. What the situation is that, is that there is a name on the left hand side and there's a value on the right. The value is calculated as the value that loop var has at the, um, when this line is initialized. You evaluate that and you get a new value 
and then you bind the loop variable, loop var, the name to that value. So this, every time this line is run, it increases the value of loop variable or loop var by one. And then we end it. And it gives us the output exactly as we hope to see it. So the structure we have is that while the test is true, some instructions are carried out. So the test, we arrive at test, test is true, we carry out the instructions, then we get in, then we go back to the top. And we check again whether the test is true. And we go back every time. So what's happening here, loop variable was initially zero. We printed its value, we incremented it to one. Then loop var is one, still less than four, print its value. Then it's two, print its value. Then it's three, print its value. It becomes four and it's no longer true that four is less than four. And so at that point, the, the loop ends. So this shows you that there is a, there's something, this test here must be able to change from true to false. Um, and the only way that can happen is if something changes inside there. This is a, a global variable, not a local variable. And this indicates the kind of danger. So this is the one situation in which you have to be alert to the fact that your program can completely run away with you and you might have to stop it. And the way to stop it is control C. So please make sure that you know where the control key is and where the C key is and you can hit it fairly quickly. And now we say while true println um, but I tell you it's true. And in fact, it is true because it, we say that it's true right there. And so uh, if we now hit enter, we have to control C very quickly because we get this whole stream of truths. I'm trying to scroll up. I'm trying to scroll up, nothing happened. So many values were put out. Um, I just can't know. So many values, so many values, so many values, so many values. Where is it? Too many to note. So, control C is a way of interrupting your, uh, Julia um, and it almost always works. The fact is that um, computers can get into conditions like this where in principle, if they had enough energy and, uh, and nothing broke and nobody switched things off, they could continue forever, infinity, for an unlimited amount of time until the world runs out of energy. So it needs to be interrupted. Computers really do need to be interrupted from time to time. For Julia, control C almost always works, but um, things can go wrong, not only in Ju within Julia itself, but uh, in Julia's relationship with the rest of the computer or in the computer itself. And so it's unpredictable when you need to do the interruption. And although control C almost always works for Julia, it doesn't always work elsewhere. But anyway, control C is your friend, where even if it's not, um, running, it's not in an infinite loop, but it's just taking too long. You want it to stop. You want to say, okay, I've seen what I want to see. I stop it. Then you can use control C. Control C is your friend. Okay, so there's a function called push bang. <clears throat> and in a while block, it can make a list of numbers. So the Fibonacci numbers, they grow quite fast. They, they, they go, they're the sequence. The rule for continuing in the sequence is that to determine the next number, you add the previous two. So two is one plus one, three is two plus one, five is three plus two, eight is five plus three, 13 is eight plus five, and the next one will be 21 plus 13, which is 34. So we'll put them in an array called fib numbers, and initially it is just the first two numbers on the list. The next number will therefore be the last number on the list plus the number before. 
And even if the number gets very long, this is always the last number and this is always the number before, provided all the new numbers get put in on the right. Let's look up the help on push, push bang that is. So push bang. So it, in, it operates on collection with items and it inserts one or more items at the end of this and it sends it onto collection again. So this is one of those uh, functions which modifies the argument. Here the argument it modifies is the um, variable or the value um, bound to the name collection and the new value is again bound to the name collection. So it changes the value that is bound to the name collection but the name collection is part of the argument and so therefore pushbang is a function that modifies its argument. So here is one, two, three, the array one, two, three, and you push bang the elements five, four, five, and six onto it. Uh, and here they talk about a function called append bang, which has a similar meaning, but we don't use it in this course. Okay, so now we have this code. So we want to see the list of numbers that are at least as big as a thousand. So we will actually have to continue doing this until we've gone beyond a thousand. That's the point of uh, this bit of logical code which controls uh, the loop. It says it will, the loop will continue until the last number is not smaller than a thousand. We start with our initial array, just the numbers one and one, and then we say while fib numbers at end, the last of the fib numbers, the biggest of them all, is not bigger than a thousand or is less than a thousand, of course. What do we do? We push bang the array fib numbers with a value, with just one value, and that value is equal to fib numbers at end minus one plus fib numbers at end. Um, and then we end that. Let's make it. So now we can see quite clearly we have a while loop. The test is that the largest of the fib numbers must, n must be smaller than a thousand. While that is true, we're going to add another fib number. And then we will print lin fib numbers. Um, if I were to just uh, give the function name print numbers, then it would be an array and it would be vertically displayed. So this is a nice way of displaying them all horizontally. It doesn't tell me how many there are, however, so to see how many there are, I can just say length fib numbers. And this is, it took up to number 17 to be bigger than a thousand. Okay, so now what does it mean to say that two lines form a while end pair? So the, the problem arises if there are um, keywords in between inside this area of code who also create code blocks. Um, so maybe if occurs after while, well then it must have its end before the while code block or, a, or it's not it doesn't occur inside the while code block at all. So that means the whole of the if or none of the if block must be inside the while block. So let's just see the structure of this just um, using uh, three dots to, to indicate that there may be some code but it's not really part of the essential structure. It says while, some code, some code, if, some code, some code, else, some code, some code, and then that's the end of the if block 
and there's maybe some more code for the wild block and then it's end. So there's a test here and there's code there, there's a test there and that's it. So the if block must be nested inside the wild block. That's what we mean by nested code. Um, the first end in here must close the if block. That's all it can do. This end cannot close the while block because there's still an open if block. And we can uh, reverse the order of nesting. We can have an if block with while inside it, but the while, if it starts over here, it would have to end before the, the else. And similarly, if the while block was in there, it would have to end before the for the end. So um, most languages actually limit how far the nesting can go, but we certainly don't get anywhere near those limits. We, in fact, we might not do any nested code at all. I recommend that you avoid deep nesting uh, when writing code. So here's a summary of the lesson. A while block is useful when the number of steps of an iteration are not, is not known but a stopping condition can be formulated. A while block has local scope, and the syntax is that while a test is true, the code in this code body is executed repeatedly. You go through the whole code path from here to here, test it again, and if it's still true, do it again. In order, therefore, not to have an infinite loop, there must be at least one variable in the while block that can be made global so that it can be evaluated by the stopping condition to check whether um, the stopping condition has been reached. You can have more of them, of course. They may all of them have to play a role in the stopping tradition. Um, if you somehow have a, an, an a iteration that goes on too long, you can use Control C to interrupt it. Function push bang adds one or more elements to the end of an array. Because there is a, a use in Julia for an exclamation mark in a name, namely in the name of a function that modifies its input and then we put it at the end. Then we uh, discuss the nesting of code blocks. They cannot overlap, they have to be completely nested, but you should avoid uh, writing code in which the nesting goes too deep. Okay, thanks. That's the end of this lesson.